Morning Angry Fans. I'm in the posh car today. Suzuki Vitara. I can recommend it for everything except for one thing. One thing. It's between Lenham and Ashford Railways. Two things. One is that they can't work it out to stop the radio coming on whenever I start the engine and the second thing is the bloody doorknobs. They've got this proximity opening thing. There's a little rubber square that you press on the door to open the door <coughs> and uh, you press it once to open the front door and then twice to open all the doors. And I mean you know on the face of it, it sounds so easy doesn't it but I must have tried ten times to get in the doors this morning. I just wanted to open all the doors. So I'm trying to, you know, get the child seat in the back and it's like, push the button, try the back door. Push the button, try the back door. And you're locking it, unlocking it. Locking and unlocking the front door, I reckon. Must have done it 10 times before I worked out what key sequence. I need to press from having just the front door unlocked to having the, all the doors unlocked, which involves cycling through them all being locked. So anyway, so that's, that's if you're listening from Suzuki, how are you? So that is a big problem. But I like the auto follow. The uh, uh, autopilot on this car is great. You just get on a motorway, put it on 70 miles an hour, tuck in behind something. It keeps the distance. It's got radar on it, it's lidar, whatever it uses. And uh, and then all you've got to do is work out, you know, just swap lanes just to keep your speed constant. It's uh, absolutely brilliant. And it makes a long distance driving so much easier. It's you know, it's like it's a step towards self-driving cars, isn't it? But it's it's a you know, it just goes to show you how much work is involved in driving a car. If you do any amount of long distance driving, what's wrong with you? then uh, you know you'll you'll know that anything over 100 miles is a you know you you'd be wanting to take a break every 100 miles or so. But with this four hours, I've done a four hour trip in it, no trouble at all. Because you're not doing anything, you know what I mean? You're just, you're just sitting here changing lanes, changing lanes. So much uh, that you don't have to concentrate on. Like, you know, you can look, you can look at the, uh, to change the radio or something without worrying about whether the car in front's gonna slam its brakes on. Because if the car in front does slam its brakes on, your car will realise before you ever would, it will slow down and it will slow down quicker both both in terms of how fast it reacts and also how fast it slows down better than you ever will. So really it's, uh, it's great. And the other advantage is of course that it speeds up. When the car in front of you is, is, is pulling away, it might take you two or three seconds to realise that and sort of follow him. But with the old LiDAR thing, your car starts accelerating and you can't work out why. And you realise that it's because the car in front has, has already started accelerating and you're just keeping up with him. So that really enables you to make fantastic progress. You know, you really are, you feel as though you're not uh, wasting one second of, of acceleration because uh, the car's got, got, you know, you knows you want to get from A to B and it's really, really helping you. And so as a result, you know, you can stick it on 70 or whatever, you know, speed you're comfortable with on a motorway. And it will just maintain that. And it will just plod away and sometimes it will seem slow to you and sometimes it will seem fast to you. But overall, you don't care because you are making the best possible progress at your chosen speed. And that means that you're not <clears throat> doing, you know, what we all do subconsciously, which is sometimes to drive slower than we probably need to and then at other times get a bit aggravated and stressed and possibly drive faster than we should you know so we've all uh, had a little rev up and we all had a bit of a speed up you know because we're a bit frustrated with our progress but with this thing you just you get in and you just you know let the old train take the strain like I'm coming up, a, uh, let me see if I can turn, no I'm not going to try and turn it around while I'm driving, but there's a, I'm coming up against a line of cars now, so what I do is I put it on cruise and press set, 
and then and that's it. It's not hands free, but basically it's now following the car in front at 51 miles an hour. It's set for. In fact, I can put that up to 60. It won't accelerate, but that's the speed limit for the road. So. It should the cars in front speed up 60 then it will go up 60 and still follow them and then it will stay at 60 and, th and then they'll pull away if they're going faster so it's a lot <coughs> excuse me it's a lot easier to um, demonstrate than it is to explain but at the moment I don't have my foot on the accelerator or the brake and in fact or, or even covering them um, because the car will do it and, and it is fantastically reliable the only time it's slightly it can get into trouble under two, two circumstances. One is uh, if you're coming up to a roundabout. It will not see the roundabout and it will not slow down for the roundabout. If the cars are slowing down for the roundabout, obviously it will slow down with the cars. But it will not slow down. As soon as the cars go around the roundabout, it will speed up 60 again and go straight across if you don't do something. So um, you have to disconnect it when you're... I mean, it's mainly for long straight roads, you know, like now where I'm just following a, a bunch of traffic and I just want to... Um, reduce my workload and uh, the other time is if you're on a motorway and some idiot pulls out in the gap I mean literally right you know you know you know where you've leaving quite a decent I and mean, the car leaves quite a respectable gap here we are it's slowing down now so they've got the brake lights on brake lights on and it's slowing down it's slowing down it's slowing down because we're coming up to a roundabout so in fact it'll disengage itself when it gets down to about 25 miles an hour You'll hear it go ding, and that means that I've got to carry on braking because it's here we go. Not yet, not yet. Yeah, so if some idiot pulls out in the in the traffic, there we go. So that's it now. So I'm in charge now. Then what will happen is the radar will, will suddenly pick up this foreign body that's right in front of you, and what it'll do is it will reasonably aggressively sort of pull back, you know. And first of all, that's not the sort of behaviour that motorists expect on a motorway. That's not human behaviour. That's like, you know, like uh, if you watch people playing uh, in online chess and they're playing someone and all of a sudden their, their opponent makes a really weird move and you think that's not a human move. That person's using a chess computer to cheat. You know, that is, that is a computer move. That's because a human wouldn't have thought of that. And it's a, it's a bit of the same on the motorway. At the moment, so many people are just obviously still driving like humans that we've got this funny mixture of uh, human with a little bit of computer thrown in. And the humans are not quite sure what to make of it, you know? Because norm normally, the reaction to a car pulling out will be for you just inch back a bit and perhaps to reduce slightly the space. But the computer not, doesn't compromise at all on safety or the, or the amount or the distance. And so the poor schmuck who's behind you is going to get a shot because all of a sudden you're going to you're going to put another 50 yards between you and the car in front, and he's going to get really really squeezed by virtue of this extra car getting in the queue. Oh, what else? I had porridge this morning. I've got some porridge. I've got I've got a wayward oat. Uh. Yeah, yeah, and that's it, you know. And then, of course, the, but the rain lidar turns itself off when it's really, really misty, or uh, you know, there's a lot of rain spray. I mean, you know, like a real load of rain spray. But for the most part, it's very reliable. I'm coming in the uh, a different way today because I don't have to go past the paper shop to get the papers because I'm still not. I heard from the GDC on uh, Wednesday. Today's Friday. I sent them the papers Tuesday afternoon to get there for Wednesday morning and then I sent them an email Wednesday morning and saying look could they fast track it and <clears throat> despite the fact that they say oh yeah it takes five days to reply to an email I did get an email back pretty pretty by, you know, by return a lot of friendly one you know a friendly formal GDC type one that says you know yeah, uh, thank you very much yeah, you must appreciate that we have to deal with all these applications in strictly in the date order that they come in and we can't make exceptions and then we do appreciate that you know you every day that goes by you're having to cancel another day's worth of patients and and people's uh, you know swellings are going untreated and uh, their uh, half a dozen patients have got a crown sitting in the cupboard that they can't have cemented because you know but but you know we're not <laughs> the, the rules 
rules are the rules. <laughs> it, it's the law. So uh, that's it. I'm sorry, that's it. However, half an hour after <clears throat> that email was sent to me, I did get an acknowledgement saying my case had been opened. So I think, and I want to give the GDC the absolute maximum benefit of the doubt here, I am hoping and I think possibly that the person who sent me that email so quickly also went and dragged out my application from the, the mailbox and maybe working on it now and and <clears throat> you know I mean it's so difficult because you're, you're they say well all these applications have to be treated in date order and uh, you know, we can't make exceptions. Whereas, in, you know, and they're all to be treated the same. Whereas, in fact, they are not all the same, right? They, all these applications are not all the same. Because an application from someone who's failed to pay their ARF is is an application which would, you know, you know, that dentist would not be disqualified from working on the 5th of January for any reason whatsoever other than, other than that technical issue of the failure to pay you know they're, they're they're paying 24 hours late or 48 hours late there's no there's no reason to disqualify that person from working and so as a result there would be no there's no reason not to immediately reapprove their application i mean and if you've got if you've got any qualms with that person you know then those should be brought up after the readmission you know you should you should just flag it and say look we're going to rubber stamp this place get him back on the register but we're going to flag him for a follow up because X, Y, Z, right? But if if they would have been working anyway, then why not just get them back working? You know, they've got a surgery, they've got the patients, they've uh, they've uh, got the indemnity, and in my case, I've been inspected by the CQC this year. I mean, I mean, last year, you know, 2017, inspected and passed with five green ticks. So there's no, all, all applications are not the same. They could fast track these things. I don't see why I have to, uh, have to go to the back of the queue behind a bunch of people who've had babies or, uh, you know, or uh, moved abroad and want to work back in the UK again and where they're having to check, uh, you know, uh, someone claims that they've got a Romanian degree that entitles them to work in the UK and so they have to then make inquiries of the Romanian University as to when, what exactly what date the degree was awarded, etc, etc. I don't see why I should have to go, or, or applications like mine should have to go in the queue, in the back of the queue, behind those sort of inquiries, though, or those sort of inquiries have to be made first before mine. Mine can be rubber stamped, it literally can be rubber stamped. You know, it can be providing providing that it's in order, in other words, it's filled in correctly and it's all signed where it needs to be signed, it could be rubber stamped. But this is another case where, you know, uh, bureaucracy trumps efficiency. You know, I would, that's, that's, you know, that's the way I would do it. You know, I like the quick and easy win. I like, I like the easy win. You know, if you said to me, you've got, you've got 10 patients to treat, uh, you know, but I'm not sure that we'll get through them all today. So, which ones would you like to treat? I'll say, give me the nine occlusals and leave the crown prep till last, because then I'll know I, I've shifted nine patients out of ten. Whereas if you do the crown prep and it's a difficult one, you might only shift three patients out of ten. You know, go for the do the easy wins, get the easy ones out of the way quick, and then do the difficult ones. Anyway, I don't know, it's Friday, I might bang him off another email and ask him how it's going. That's what the, old, the legal beagle said, that you've got to just keep bothering them, keep chasing it up, keep it in the forefront of their brain, keep it at the top of their inbox, you know. <coughs> but any, uh, any uh, undue delay in processing this sort of, this sort of uncontentious uh, application for readmission as you know you've got to start after a while you've got to start thinking it's just punitive you know it's just th th their attitude oh well you know it's not our fault you didn't pay it's your, you've only got yourself to blame you know it's your fault you, you've only got yourself to blame and uh, perhaps a couple of weeks off the register will do you a bit of good make you think about taking out a standing order you know doing a direct debit like we suggested Actually, I think rather than send you 10 reminders, I think one reminder on the actual day, on the December 31st, would be better. 
I think again if the GDC is listening to this and I very much doubt that they are but if they are then I think now my wife said you know did you get a reminder and I said yeah that's the problem you know I've got 10 reminders <laughs> And so what happens is the first reminder, you don't do anything of the, of the first reminder because it's too early. It's too early for you to do anything. And then by the time you've got the fifth reminder, it goes on the pile with the other four reminders, doesn't it? What I needed was an SMS or something on December 31st saying, Dear Mr. Watson, we noticed that uh, to date you have not paid your ARF. Uh, just a friendly reminder that if you do not pay my midnight tonight, you will be removed from the register. Um, you, you will be removed, you know, because that's when you ring up on the 1st of January and say you haven't paid, that's what they say, you will be removed. But if you notice on the reminders, it says you may be removed. It may be. Look, if you look, have a look at the reminders, at the text, it says if you do not pay, you may be removed. And what they what they mean is, they they give the impression that it's it's not a done deal, you know, that it's, you know, that they, they, they might just send you another reminder and saying, look, you know, we are going to remove you if you don't pay. I think it gives the wrong impression. The sense in which they use the word "may," you may be removed, is that uh, you know you may be you may be taken from this place uh, to a place of execution and shot. That's what they are. They you may be. You know they should use "you will be removed." And in other areas, like uh, <clears throat> for example, with the CPD requirement, you'll notice that their language is slightly different. What they do is they say if you if you uh, or when you reapply you you will be asked for evidence of your CPD yeah you will be asked to provide evidence that you've done the CPD that you claim when you reapply you will be not you may be whereas in fact I think it's the other way around. I think you may be asked for evidence of your CPD it's possible that you will but you may be whereas in fact you will be removed uh, and not may so uh, that's the only thing I would there are two suggestions I would make to the GDC one is to change the language to make it quite clear that if you do not pay but on the dot you will be removed from the register and then the other thing is um, is to um, send people that I mean probably an SMS is impossible but but an email most people get an email on their phone on December 31st saying you will be removed at midnight if if you don't pay today because I think that's the only thing that would have reminded me you know I had so much I was I was away at the time I wasn't at home I wasn't anywhere near the practice the practice had been shut since the 24th or 23rd or whatever and uh, I don't uh, I don't like direct debits and uh, so and I always pay you know towards the end of December so and it slipped my mind it's a human error human error that's why cars have bumpers and pencils have rubbers human error you have to you have to adapt to it, you know, not if you're the GDC you don't, if you're the GDC you're in the business of punishing human error aren't you? Human error, you love human error because it's your raison d'etre, it's uh, what pays your wages, it's what enables you to sit on millions and millions and millions of pounds and of other people's money and just generally uh, act like a complete arse. But uh, the rest of us, you know, the humans, we have to we have to cope with human error both in ourselves and in others so anyway friday so that's a whole week off the register it's not been a bad week to be quite honest i mean i have done so much paperwork i've done so much stuff that i would never have got around to doing otherwise the nurses are repainting the surgery which is great. I mean, that's that's another tip, right? If you have got nurses that are doing nothing, like supposing you've got a dentist on holiday, but the nurse is not on holiday, then give them a paintbrush and tell them to do a bit of decorating. They love it. They love doing their work. They've been paid to, to improve their working environment. And that's basically what they're doing, you know. So, and don't worry too much about the color, you know. Just let them, let them do it how they like it and then if it's obviously a disaster then they can repaint it again can't they <laughs> but generally they're very good you know they're very good at decorating and they, and they do uh, you know it makes a break you know from filing and uh, and looking after patients and stuff like that just to be just to be brightening the place up a bit and the patients like it as well and i like it because paint's cheap all right lovely i'll uh, and i've got no money coming in <laughs> right talk to you soon bye